Welcome to another episode of the Cozy Cottage Crochet Podcast. My name is Hannah, and this is a podcast all about crochet, a little bit of knitting, sometimes sewing, and generally living the yarniest life possible in St. Petersburg, Florida, where I live. How are you? It has been two weeks, and happy almost June! Happy almost Pride Month! You may notice that Nova is not with me today, and you also may notice that I sound like a frog. <laughs> Everything this week is completely discombobulated. Nova's currently sleeping. I am in a different podcast location because it's Friday <laughs> and my husband is off today. So we did stuff this morning and <clears throat> I wanted, I always record on Thursdays, but I didn't have a voice at all yesterday. So we will see. This may be a short podcast episode, depending on how long my voice holds up. I have a cough drop in my mouth. I have tea over there. I have water over there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nova has been sick this week. She had like a tummy bug that gave her diarrhea for a couple of days. And then she so kindly shared her germs with me, but I didn't get stomach problems. I got like a chest thing, <clears throat> which makes me sound like a frog. So <laughs> Nova is wonderful. She's just sleeping and she's totally fine now. And I am definitely on the back end of it, but I couldn't talk at all yesterday. So if the volume is really low on this podcast episode, just turn it up on your iPad, on your computer, because I cannot talk any louder or I will go hoarse. So if you are looking for me anywhere on the interweb, you can find me as the Cozy Cottage Crochet on Instagram, on Facebook, and I have an email address set up specifically for this podcast called the Cozy Cottage Crochet at gmail.com. That is the best way to get a hold of me. I have very exciting news. <laughs> you may know what it is because I am wearing it. And I am thrilled to tell you that the Belong Wrap, this is a crochet pattern, is live. It's out in the world. It is available for everyone to make. Thank you so much to my wonderful tech editors. Thank you for my, um, my wonderful test crocheters and my wonderful tech editor. Singular, I only have one. <laughs> Um, and special, special thank you to Eden's Fun Yarn. Um, Eden is the dyer behind Eden's Fun Yarn and she collaborated with me to make this six color rainbow called the Belong Wrap and it's just the most beautiful colors. I will show you the whole thing. So it is a crochet wrap worked on the bias. So we have, and on the bias means the whole thing is this. So if you hold it straight up and down, it's going at a diagonal um, and it, ha it starts with ribbing, we have this beautiful tonal purple, goes into the blue, it has all these textured sections, goes into the green, the yellow, the orange, the red, all six colors of the rainbow, and every section has ribbing, and then the beginning and end have ribbing as well. I just love this. <laughs> it was a joy to make, and from my test crocheters, they also found it a joy to make as well. And I am so grateful that Eden really understood what I was trying to do with this wrap. <laughs> and the link for this is directly down below. Um, this pattern is available on Ravelry. It is also available on Payhip, which reminds me I need to add it to Payhip because <laughs> I don't think it's on there yet. So yeah, this pattern is available and 20% of the sales of this pattern are going to be donated to different church that is the little inclusive faith community that we have here in St. Petersburg, Florida. And actually, you may not know this, but just as a personal choice, I donate 10% of all sales of all of my patterns all of the time. So every month when Ravelry gives me the report at the end of the month of how many patterns have been sold and Pay PayHip gives me the report, I take 10% of that immediately and donate it um, just off the top before I do anything else. But for this pattern specifically, um, I will be donating 20% of the sales just because it's important to me to have safe spaces for people and to support that. So um, you can use the code that I will link below for Eden's Fun Yarn if you would like this exact six color rainbow. She will give you 20% off in her store and I will link that down below. And otherwise, I'm just so thrilled that this pattern is out in the world and it's so cozy. <laughs> And someday, someday when we have our own space, our own space for different church, I mean, 
instead of just renting space on a Sunday morning, this rack will be hanging in the lobby or somewhere really, really visible so that everyone who walks in never has a question in their mind of what we stand for in regards to inclusion and affirmation of all people, but specifically the LGBT plus community. So yeah, this pattern is live in the world. <laughs> and I know last time I talked about how I was feeling really uninspired that continued for a few more days after the last podcast and then I did get some more things done not a ton I've been feeling generally uninspired to work on the projects that I already have going <coughs> excuse me oh my goodness are we gonna make it it's only been five minutes <coughs> good lord let's take a water break okay so I have worked on two pairs of socks. I've worked on one crochet sweater, a teeny bit. <laughs> I have worked on a baby blanket and I have worked on a knit sweater. So I'm gonna take this off because <laughs> it, the air conditioner is not running right now and it's a little bit hot, but I'm going to set it right there. Okay, let's start with socks because that's the smallest and the easiest. The first pair of socks I will show you, I have accomplished a little bit on. It is my travel socks. So my travel socks are a pair of socks that just hang out in my purse slash bag that I carry around. And anytime I'm waiting anywhere, I will put a few stitches. Literally, sometimes it's like seven stitches and I put it away. Um, but I did have some time where I was waiting. And so a lot of this got done, actually. This is where I was last time. I had the cuff and this much done and I have done all of this. So I am actually at the start of the heel. I think I am a couple of rows. Yes, I'm a couple of rows into the heel, which you can kind of see literally a couple of rows. Mm -hmm. And um, it has basically what I do is I cast on 64 stitches on 2.25 millimeter needles. So my Chalgu Red Lace Circulars, I love them for socks. I knit 15 rounds of ribbing. And then for my taller socks, I will do six inches from the top of the cuff before I start the heel. And on my shorter socks, I'll do 15 rounds of ribbing and 15 rounds of stockinette before I start the heel. I will be putting a shadow wrap heel that is by Denise, who is Earth Tones Curl. Um, I just love that heel at the moment and I have it memorized, so it's really easy. This is the second sock. So I am like 75% of the way <laughs> done with these socks. The first one, I think I showed you last time, but just in case I didn't, <laughs> this is what it looks like. This yarn is Zauberball Crazy Yarn. It's in the colorway Lilac of some kind, and it is a long colorway, but it's non-self-repeating. So like, it won't, the color stripe pattern won't ever repeat. And so where this sock lifts off, this one starts and it keeps going like this which is so, so pretty. Yeah, so that's stock number one. I have done probably three or four inches on and I'm excited about that. I don't know if any, I probably won't get touched at all this weekend, <laughs> but the next time I'm waiting somewhere, it will get worked on and I don't, I'm not on any kind of deadline or rush on that sock. It's just nice to have something on the go to take with me. And if I happen to be stuck somewhere with a little bit of time, I can totally work on that sock. The second sock I am getting really close to finishing actually. This is yarn that was given to me by my dear friend Maria who um, used to have the yarn company Fat Bunny Yarn. She's no longer dyeing yarn to sell um, but she gifted me this beautiful yarn. I believe the colorway was called Chill Factor and that's the second sock as well. So this was the first one and I made these shorties and then there was a little mini that went with them and I, I just I have loved every single stitch of working on these socks. They're so plump and squishy and like, oh my gosh. They were supposed to have contrast cuffs, heels and toes, but I got on autopilot and was almost done with the heel before I realized. So they just have contrast cuffs and toes and I'll have to use the rest of the mini on maybe heels for some other time. I just love how this yarn is working up. And this sock, I'm pretty sure I only had, I was right before the heel last time. So I finished the heel. My goal was before this podcast episode, have the heel done. But then one night I really wanted something to work on and I didn't have any brain power whatsoever. So I pulled this out and basically knit the entire foot. I have half an inch left before I start the toe. So 
Oh, I cannot wait to wear these. <laughs> I There is something, it's so magical about wearing hand dyed sock yarn on your feet. I know it sounds crazy, especially if you've never done it before. The first time I ever made a pair of socks in like hand dyed indie kind of yarn was my lovely friend Amanda, who is a patron of this podcast, sent me a sock set from Hue Loco actually two sock sets and I made two pairs of socks and it was so amazing. I still have those socks. I still wear them all the time. They've held up really well and just knitting them was a pleasure. Every time I wear them, it is a pleasure. It's crazy how much joy and delight I get from knitting them and also wearing them on my feet. And that's what we're supposed to be doing with yarn, right? Having joy and delight. So if you have sock yarn, beautiful, wonderful sock yarn. And you're like, I don't want to waste it on socks. Trust me. <coughs> it is not a waste at all. It is delightful and magical and you're going to love it forever. And I wear my, I was literally wearing a pair of my hand dyed socks last night. I wear socks. I wear them every night to bed now. <laughs> Post Nova, I have to wear socks to bed because my feet are freezing. So I'm really excited to have another pair to add to my collection. Now, Let's talk a crochet, two crochet things, one of which is finished, and this is a gift. It was my goal, again, <laughs> to have this done for this podcast episode because I, I need to gift it to someone next week, and it is a baby blanket. It is just all gray all the time. <laughs> it is a corner to corner blanket. I just did a really simple half double crochet in the round border. This is Bernat blanket yarn in the colorway, I believe, gray. If it's not gray, it's like light gray or something. Um, it's it's huge. This is folded in thirds. I'm not gonna unfold the whole thing because I have it folded a certain way so that I can roll it up and stuff it in her gift bag like so. Yeah, I, I mean, these are so quick, so easy to make and I really enjoy making them. They're so plump and squishy. They're not really baby blankets, I would say, because no baby is gonna sleep under that, but they make wonderful tummy time blankets, floor mats, um, just an area to put your baby, especially when they're sitting, to kind of cushion them in case they fall if you have a hard floor. So I love making those for people, because um, you don't really use blankets with a baby anyway, unless you have a baby in the winter, and even then it's like for the stroller <laughs> or the car seat. So I try to make those because they're really multifunctional, and then once the child is old enough to like sleep with a blanket, that is a good size as well because it's pretty big. So it's actually a gift for my pelvic physical therapist <laughs> who is having a baby in just a couple of months, like two months she's having a baby. And we have very similar histories with miscarriage and things like that. And I just want her to know that she, I've been thinking about her and it's really hard to get me to make things for other people because I have so little <laughs> crochet time. But if there's a baby involved, I, I just love making baby blankets for people. <clears throat> so that's crochet number one. Crochet number two, only a tiny, tiny bit of work has been done on this because this requires a lot of counting. And I literally did one pattern repeat. It is the last Ray sweater. I can find a photo for you. The last Ray sweater by Lena Fedotova. That was terrible. We'll try it again. <laughs> That's better. I am doing, I am making the pattern all kinds of different. She wants it to be huge and boxy and I don't want that shape. And the smallest size in her pattern starts with 122 single crochets. And I actually have started the front panel with 104. So I've done a lot of math to make it a lot smaller. And <laughs> last time you saw it, I had this first roll of hose roll of hose <laughs> row of holes <coughs> done and since then I have added one more row of holes <laughs> that's literally all I've added I'm still like is this gonna be too big I don't know so we'll see I love 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 this yarn it's Malabrigo hot pink magenta kind of yarn let's see what the colorway is if I can dig it out fuchsia 
Malabrigo 100% Superwash Merino Wool, 440 yards for 100 grams. And this yarn was a gift. And because I'm making this so much smaller, um, I may have enough left to make a whole nother project with. Because originally I was like, oh, I'm gonna definitely need four skeins, but I bet you I can make this whole thing in three. We'll see, it's very exciting. <laughs> but only a tiny amount, <clears throat> tiny amount has been done on that. It just required too much brain power, honestly. And, and I know that it did because <laughs> on one of the rows, I had to frog it like three times because I miscounted. So I actually ended up fudging it, but it's fine. No one will know. No one will know except me and I don't care. I couldn't even tell you where in the row I got fudged. The last project I've been working on is, <laughs> you like how I have a pin in every pattern? Because I scribble all over them. <laughs> it is a knit sweater. It is the Darjeeling cardigan. This is a pattern by Knitting for Olive. And I am making size two. I'm making size three stitch counts using size two measurements because I like the gauge that I got. Um, it's a pretty well-written pattern. I have had zero questions about it, except for this pattern has no schematic. So proceed with caution, y'all. The yarn, let's see if I can do this without tangling it up. <laughs> it's actually not attached to any yarn right now. The yarn is these two held together. This is Ula Plus Leah 100% Yak yarn. Ula Plus Leah is a Mon like yarn that comes from Mongolia and I participated in a Kickstarter last year when Nova was really tiny and then at like eight months later this yarn showed up. And then this is Pearl Soho Tussock. It's a mohair silk blend yarn. It is incredibly fuzzy and kind of magical when held together with this. This is skein number one of the fingering weight yarn and this is skein number one of the mohair silk. I still have this much left of each one. These are 25 grams and these are 100 grams. And I have seven of the 100% yak yarns, which I'm definitely not gonna use that much. And I think I have five, so 125 grams of the mohair. And I have the two front panels done. <laughs> Does this look crazy or what? <laughs> This is so crazy, I have it upside down. So I wanted to show you this and my other goal is to have this part done before this podcast episode so I could show you before I start adding the back because a lot of times the construction on things is incredibly confusing, especially if you've never seen anything like this. So how did this get made? Well, I, right here where this gold stitch marker is, you cast on and then you go this way. So you knit this neck, this you can see is actually kind of curved. That's done with short rows, which is impressive. And it's ribbing. So done with short rows. Then you start this and this is the left shoulder. So you work the left shoulder all the way down. And then as you can see, it is increasing like this. So this was the original part. So now it has more stitches on this side. And then I just added, um, a few more stitches under here for the underarm, which is going to fit really well, I think. I think it's actually gonna fit me perfectly the way that I want it to, using the size three stitch counts and size two measurements. So that after this part was done, what you do is you then pick up stitches from your cast on edge on the neckband and you mirror everything. So you're going this way with short rows and then this way with the left shoulder and the same thing. So as you can see, right, it, they're a little like lopsided, but <laughs> um, it's increasing like this. And all, but all of this has been worked with like this part up here has short rows in it as well. So this whole thing has a curve, which I find fascinating. And then I read ahead in the pattern. Once I pick up stitches for the back, there is going to be some short rows before I start going back and forth evenly for quite a while. There's going to be some short rows on either side up here too, which is just going to add some shaping. And I think that is so cool. So cool. So this one I actually um, snipped the yarn on last night. I'm gonna put this on a holder, take my needles off because these are interchangeable needles, and then I'm gonna pick up the stitches on the back. I don't know when that's gonna happen because 
for some reason picking up stitches is hard for me not the actual act of picking them up but like counting it like feels daunting <laughs> so this is the first time i've actually like put this on my body and held it up and i'm kind of thrilled with it and i also would like to report because i've been feeling very sensitive to things lately that this yak and mohair silk does not is not making me itchy at all like it feels so soft so it will have basically the next step is to pick up the back do short rows on either side and then knit evenly straight down till under the underarms and then once it's joined then you start going back and forth for the rest of the cardigan i'll give you a close-up of the beautiful texture it's just so pretty <laughs> i will say i if for some reason this goes terribly wrong it is not getting frogged not in a million years it would just have to be bent <clears throat> because this is mohair silk it is like this yarn is so grippy <laughs> and i know this because on this side it's the opposite of this side and i had to tink several times on the neck band because i was purling away not doing the ribbing pattern because <laughs> i just wasn't thinking and so even just tinking back like six stitches took like a couple of minutes every time to like kind of tease the mohair away so this has grip it is not coming undone not a chance in the world so it's really really beautiful and i really really like it a lot and i just think the color is amazing the yarn is amazing i've never like i've never really been a burgundy kind of person but this is like amazing to me and it's like it's almost like a colorful neutral because it has some color and it, it will go with blue it'll go with black it'll go with all kinds of things but it's not loud in your face color which i normally go for like these <laughs> that's the, normally my color in this so i'm really in love with it like like very much in love <coughs> so yeah it's very exciting stuff Lots of needles and cables, etc., 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 everywhere. But what in the world? I don't know what's going on here. Let's see if this tea is cooled down enough to sip. It still feels pretty hot. Let's see. Pretty hot, but not terrible. This is um, traditional medicinals. It's their throat coat lemon echinacea version. It is the tea I always turn to when my throat hurts or it's scratchy. I literally have gone through a whole box of it this week, which is insane. So yeah, the Darjeeling cardigan is coming along and it really is quite exciting to be working on something that is at such a big gauge because <laughs> I'm normally working on fingering weight things that take forever to grow and that's fingering weight and lace weight yarn held together but I'm working on 5.5 millimeter needles which is <laughs> it's growing so fast it's crazy it's really crazy oh that feels so good <laughs> it truly feels so good in my throat I don't know how long we're gonna make it y'all let's uh keep going and we'll see <laughs> if i have a little bit of voice left within me so um i did get some happy mail which we'll get to in a second but i did want to discuss an issue that i have been uh, maybe like crowdsource because i put this out on instagram as well and like there's just not a lot of designers doing stuff and what I find is that the crochet garment patterns are kind of big and bulky or very lacy. So there's a billion DK and worsted crochet patterns, but there are very few that are fingering weight that are not like just lace all over. Which lace all over is fine, but like I'm thinking of Jessie May designs in her knitting and Jacqueline Seaslack make the most cl incredible classic 
wardrobe staples. They're hand, they're knitted. They're handmade um, patterns you can hand make and they will just be in your wardrobe forever because they're these patterns that they will never ever go out of style and you don't have to match them to anything. And I don't have my iPad with you or I would show you <laughs> the patterns. And I have spent so much time the last couple of weeks searching on Ravelry for similar things in crochet and there just don't seem to be any because I haven't been inspired to work on the things that I'm already working on. So I'm like, oh, I don't really want to start another knitted garment. Like I like knitting, but I love crochet and I want to see crazy things in crochet. Like, like the construction that I just showed you for the Darjeeling cardigan, where you start at the neckband, you go this way, you knit this part, you go this way, you knit this part. We don't have stuff like that in crochet. And if we do, the patterns are few and far between which really bothers me because <laughs> that's such a big hole. Like there, I would make, if there were a pattern like that in crochet, I would make it. And I have come to the realization that I think that there's two problems with crochet that we need to kind of solve together as, as people who make things and also as people who design before this can happen. One is it is very, very hard in crochet to get a smooth look. So for example, while knitting stockinette, on one side you knit and on the other side you purl and it makes a smooth fabric. You can't do that in crochet um, because the stitches just don't work that way. There is no opposite of a single crochet stitch. You just work the single crochets going the other way. So you're gonna see the back of the stitch and you're gonna see that line. There are a few textured stitches such as this one, honestly. Oh no. <laughs> There was almost an avalanche, such as, let me see if I can show you on the blue. This, this is a single crochet, double crochet texture. You can't really see, there's not like, in general, crochet is gonna have lines going across every two rows. Um, and there is not in this pattern. And there's a few other textured patterns that are like that in crochet. But for the most part, you can't really avoid lines unless you're working in the round which great, you can work in the round and make a sweater. Except <laughs> that leads me to the second problem, short row shaping. If you're working in the round to create a smooth texture, it will totally work until you need to add short rows to the back. Um, there is a, an ingenious pattern called the Blurred Line Sweater by Addy Day Designs. I have made it, I adore it. Um, and it's worked in the round as a sweater. It is the most beautiful, smooth texture. It's delightful. But to add short rows in the back, you literally have to start on one side, go to the end of the row, cut the yarn and come back. Because if you don't, it will mess up the smooth texture of the fabric. So problem number one is the stitches themselves don't lend themselves to not having, or to having just that completely smooth texture that knitting has in stockinette. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something that you have to work with, right? And because crochet stitches look differently going one way for the other. It makes short row shaping in sweaters very difficult if you're going for a smooth texture. So I think those are the two main problems. If you can think of another problem, like please comment below and let me know. Um, but that's what I have decided are the problems. And I just don't see that kind of construction. Like when I did the Skyrim cardigan, which is the long line cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. It has a kind of a similar construction where you start at the back of the neck, you knit this way and you make these two panels and then you pick up on the back and then you join underneath. Like where is the people making those construction types in crochet? Because the garments are gonna fit so beautifully. Like we could have that stuff. And the, of the people who are like, they're not making them in fingering weight yarn. They're making them in DK and worsted and there is nothing wrong with that. I am not dumping on DK and worsted weight yarn. I'm just saying there's such a big hole like of, like I would crochet those. And I know so many of you would crochet a sweater like the long line cardigan. In fact, I've gotten comments and messages being like, is there a crochet version of this? And to my knowledge, no, <laughs> there's not. Um, I don't, I haven't come across anything that uses a construction like that. I'm sure there are patterns out there, but like, I don't know what they are. Um, so I'm putting it out there in the universe. Like, do you know of any designers? One designer that I will recommend is Nomad Stitches, N-O-M-A-D Stitches. 
she has done a lot of incredible things with sweaters. Um, in fact, I have a couple of her, her crochet sweaters in my Ravelry queue that I want to make and I have yarn for them already picked out. I just need to dig it out and like get with the program and swatch. Who knows when that's gonna happen? The program has left me way far behind since I had a baby. But I highly recommend her. Um, but a, a lot of her patterns, at least a lot of her mo more recent kind of patterns, the sweaters like the Taroko sweater, I would make that because it's gorgeous. But it uses yarns, not necessarily held double, but like kind of crocheted over each other because you're using a waistcoat stitch and it just creates a much thicker fabric. It's not the same <laughs> as like a single layer of stockinette. Um, but she does have some amazing, amazing patterns that aren't like that. And so I highly recommend looking her up. There's a couple of other patterns that I found that I'm like, oh, that's really innovative. That's really unique. Um, but I just don't understand why as crochet designers, we aren't taking more inspiration from the knitting community in terms of construction and in terms of look. Because I, a lot of crochet pieces, not that you want them to not look crocheted, I do want them to look crocheted because it is crochet. Um, it just doesn't seem like they're as classic. Like it doesn't seem like the fabric itself lends itself to these classic timeless pieces that are gonna be in a wardrobe forever and ever and ever. And I know that sounds harsh <laughs> and I don't mean it to sound that way at all. It's just like frustrating to me because I'm looking for a certain aesthetic and I'm not finding it. I'm only finding it in knitted patterns, which makes me kind of annoyed because I want to crochet. Um, and if <laughs> I know someone's going to comment and be like, well, you should design it. You're right. I should. Um, but I don't know how to have the time to do that. I would love to make a garment with construction like that. Um, but that's a lot of math and considering that I'm still stuck, stuck <laughs> y'all on the math for the DK version of the granny stripe cardigan. I just don't see it happening anytime soon. Like that could be maybe a five-year plan for me is to do some garments like that and release them as pattern designs. Um, but I think while I have a little child, like it's just not going to happen to do like innovative construction for crochet. So if you know of anyone, like please comment below on like fingering weight classic staples. And if you are a knitter, go check out the patterns of Jessie May and Jacqueline Seaslack. They're just incredible. They're truly incredible. Um, so that's the end of my rant. <laughs> I've realized it sounds like I'm ranting and I don't mean to be, even though my voice is like two, two octaves lower and a lot scratchier. <laughs> It just like seems like a big hole that we could be filling, right? I think it seems like a big hole. That being said, <laughs> I would love to know if you feel the same way. Like, or are you more on the side of the crochet garments that currently exist that look extremely crocheted in that sense? Um, is that where you land? Like, is that your aesthetic? Because like this, for example, while this is crochet lace, this is very unique. Um, and I think this is very beautiful. I didn't personally like the shape of this one, which is why I'm making it a lot smaller so that it's not so much positive ease, but like this is an innovative crochet garment to me. We need more, we need more. So I got some happy mail to show you. So I'm just going to be showing yarn from now till the end of the episode. So um, I got one package from my dear friend Lisa who just moved <clears throat> into the most amazing house. And she didn't want to take everything with her because moving is hard. <laughs> so she sent me some bits and bobs um, a couple of times already and she sent me one more little package of things that weren't going to make it into her craft space at her new house. And I want to share them with you because they're really beautiful. There's this bag of cotton. And I want to say this is like fingering, possibly sport weight cotton. It's, I don't know what kind of yarn it is, but I really like it. Like I like this color palette. Um, it has also a Mrs. Brown's bag. Okay, I have a Mrs. Brown's bag. And it has crochet on it. And it was gifted to me by my lovely friend Amanda. Um, and this is one has knitting stitches. 
it's just so pretty. And Mrs. Brown's Bags is the bag company for the grocery girls, if you know that knitting podcast. And then she sent me some beautiful yarn as well. And the first one of these, I have been nonstop squishing and squealing, and I need to crowdsource here because this is Ula plus Leah, the same yarn I'm making the Darjeeling cardigan out of, except this is cashmere. Oh my God. It is uh, 100 grams fingering weight, 400 yards, 100% cashmere from free range goats in the colorway crimson. I have um, held cashmere yarn before, and I have a few skeins that have like a percentage of cashmere, like 10%. I have never in my life had 100% skein of cashmere yarn. This, not even a prickle. It is the softest, it's almost like buttery, smooth. I just, I am in love with this yarn. And what should I make with one skein of cashmere? Should I make a hat? I don't really need another hat, honestly. But it's so pretty. Should I make a cashmere sock head hat? Is that the most luxurious thing you've ever heard of in your life? <laughs> it is my goal actually for the Kickstarter for Ula Plus Leah this year, provided I have, I've been saving my pennies, but provided I have some funds at the same time the Kickstarter's released, I want to get a little bit of cashmere because uh, it's like a lot cheaper <laughs> to do it that way. And also it's just amazing. I just, it's so soft. It's so lovely. Like if you ever have the chance to touch cashmere yarn, I just wish you could reach through the screen and touch this right now. I think this is gonna have to be a sock head hat. It has to be, right? I have one sock head hat that I have worn all around the world. And I feel like that one being a solid color will just replace it. It's, it's magical, that yarn. There is a skein of Union Fiber Merino Singles. This is an Advent yarn. It's Advent 2021. It doesn't have a colorway name on it, but it's this beautiful gold black. And I think, I am picturing a skein in my stash that I think will go perfectly with this to make a shawl. And then this um, is Molly Girl yarn colorway bouncer this is also fingering weight and it's 100 percent merino and it's this really dark purpley gray black kind of mood mm. <laughs> i'm saying mood because i've been watching project runway jr because <laughs> it's on hulu and when my husband goes to bed at 8 30 i usually stay awake till 9 15 i know so late i'm staying awake so late um, and I've been watching Project Runway Jr. and they always go to Mood, the fabric store in New York. And every time they leave with their fabrics, they go, thank you, Mood. <laughs> Life goals. One day I will get to Mood. Although, y'all know me, right? Like, I could get overwhelmed in a yarn store. <laughs> I cannot even, I can get overwhelmed in Joanne Fabrics. I cannot imagine going into Mood and not having like almost a panic attack because they're just floor to ceiling fabric and it's designer fabrics that you make clothes from. It's not like quilting cotton, although I'm sure they have quilting cotton. So, I, someday, if you've been to Mood, comment below. Was it overwhelming? Was it insane? Was it the best thing you've ever been to? I wanna go to Mood and I wanna go to Webb's, Webb's Yarn in the Northeast. Okay, the other Happy Meal I got was a giant box <laughs> from my lovely friend Amanda. And every once in a while, just stuff shows up on my doorstep. I did not expect in any way, shape, or form this box to appear. And I was like, oh my gosh, and it is heavy. It's heavy, y'all. This is the box. <laughs> it's really big. Um, and she sent me something for my birthday, which was a little bit ago. And then she just like popped in and she's like, I just popped in a few other things thought you might like. <laughs> And um, this does not count as a few other things, is what I'm going to say. So a lot of it is DK weight yarn, which is so, I my stash is mostly fingering weight, um, but I have been eyeing some DK weight patterns that I want to make, and I just, there's a, like a few skeins of yarn in my stash that are DK weight, and none of them match. <laughs> so they haven't been made into anything. Um, but this is like mostly DK weight yarn, which I find so fascinating and will definitely be a thing. So the first 
thing I want to show you is this. This is Miss Babs yarn. Miss Babs yarn is, what I know about Miss Babs is she vends at Rhinebeck and she has the Miss Babs Yowza yarn, which is like this huge cane of yarn and like people will line up for hours to buy her yarn. So this is incredible. <laughs> this is all, this is 70% merino, 15% cashmere and 15% silk. All three of these I think are made to go together. And I think, I don't know if there's enough of them or I can maybe pair them with another skein. They, I, I kind of want them to turn into the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie May, um, which is a cozy DK weight raglan sweater, slightly oversized. Um, these are just incredible. And then this was also in there. This is Northern Lights. Um, this is Superwash Merino, I believe 100%. It doesn't really say, but it doesn't say it's anything else. Like, I feel like these four together could make a whole knitted sweater. I think it could. Long sleeve? What do you think? I might be cutting it close. <laughs> Maybe the cuffs on the sleeves would have to be a different yarn, but like this is a pretty excellent fade, I think. Yeah, that's very incredible. Very. There's this scar scarn. <laughs> this scarn of yarn. Um Toby Roxanne Designs. I've never heard of them before. Um, this is superwash merino and it's DK as well. This is like iridescent. I almost, I don't even know if it's coming through the screen, but it's like so shiny. And then this is Mason Creation Yarns. I've never heard of them all either, but it's the colorway Ravenclaw. My husband's a Ravenclaw. I wonder if I can make him something. He doesn't really, he's really hot all the time. <laughs> So I don't make him a ton of stuff, but that would look amazing with his eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry for coughing. <laughs> and then we have this. This is Yo. I, you know I can't say this. I have mispronounced this multiple different ways on this podcast before. This is DK as well. And the colorway Submerge. This is like electric. This is my kind of color. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, that's just the first layer <laughs> in the box. So stick with me. I there are three skeins of Audi Mool's flannel. This is a knit crate yarn. Um, in the colorway slate. This is an alpaca and non-superwash merino wool. And then this is wool fingering. Cloudborn. Um, so this is 100% wool and then this is like an alpaca blend, but they look like they're almost identical, identical colors. There's that. And there is a bunch of these little guys, which is actually these two are together. This is Quince & Co yarn, another yarn that I have never held, I don't think in my hands ever. Sport weight, 50 grams, 181 yards, 100% American wool. I think these should be mittens. I think I should do a mitten design. Um, these is what I was saying. There's a bunch of these little guys. <laughs> All of these together. This is Highland Sport. This is a cloudborn yarn as well, and it's 100% Highland wool. So there's three purple, two gray, and two blue. Um, and these are 50 grams as well. So it's like, one, two, three, 350 yards, uh, 350 yards, 350 grams, which I think would be enough for a sweater. I assume that was kind of some kind of color work or um, color blocking kit of some kind. There are three skeins of yarn that are fingering weight singles. This is Cosmic Strings in the colorway grunge. This looks like, um, what is that Pokemon who has smog coming out of him? I can't think of the name now, but that's what he looks like, that little purple ghost. This is Brayeria Lane in the colorway mage. And this is another round yarn in the colorway eclipse. 
So those are all fingering singles, meaning they're not plied. There is, this is baby llama yarn. That's so cool. This, I don't know what this is, but it's extremely soft. I'm guessing it probably has some alpaca in it. It looks like it's a worsted. Some of this. This is Knob Hill Artesia Yarns. This is 55% acrylic, 21% polyester, 16% nylon, and 8% wool. And I just want to show you, this yarn is like fuzzy and it's almost like chain, it's like a chain plied possibly, or just like three strands of yarn put together in some way. I don't really know, but it's really interesting construction for the ply itself of the yarn. There's a bunch of these guys and there's six of them. This is such a fun yarn. Um, it's Red Heart, an Italian story. It is 46% nylon, 28% acrylic, 20% mohair, and 6% polyester. I assume that's for the sparkles. <laughs> um, it's just so fun. I didn't even know Red Heart made yarn like this. I don't know. That's, that's just a cool idea to me. There's a bunch of those. And then there's a bunch of these also. This is Joanna Brushed by Bremont. I've never even heard of that. <clears throat> it is 100% alpaca. And it looks like it's probably a fingering weight. I'm going to guess that's a fingering weight. There's ice yarn. Of course, Ice Yarn doesn't have like the dye, <laughs> the name of it. So I don't know what to call this, but it's really pretty. And I think that would make a really amazing sweater. There's a circular needle case, or actually for cables, circular cable case for interchangeable. There's two of these, another round. These are DK, I think. Yes, DK. Oh, this is another round and this is hedgehog fibers. They look like they belong together, don't they? This one's a little more pink. There's some ice yarn breeze alpaca. There's a couple little balls, fingering weight cotton that are so adorable. And then there's two bags, which I will show you. This one is so pretty. I want to keep it, but I think I'm going to do a giveaway with it because I just, I'm not going to keep all of this stuff because that's selfish. <laughs> but it's like a fairy tale. It has the Snow Queen, Little Red Riding Hood, Aesop's Fables. Like, that's so pretty. And this is definitely a sweater quantity bag. It's got these beautiful, like, sturdy handles on top. And it's from Toad Hollow. It's so pretty. Um, and then there's this bag from Twig and Horn, which is kind of like a huge bucket bag, a huge canvas bucket bag that has a pocket. I can't even, I don't even know if I can show you this. <laughs> a pocket, this middle section, and a pocket here, and it has a yarn guide as well. And it has some extra pockets, like one big inside pocket on each side, and then the center giant pocket. And then on the outside, it has some pockets as well. So that's like a really big sweater quantity bag. Oh, and then this, there was this little box inside. And I love a good box. <laughs> I really, really love a good box. She wrote me a lovely note. There's some beautiful little washcloths that will immediately, these are really soft. So I think these are actually gonna be Nova's washcloths. Um, there's this, <laughs> it's a Jeep. <laughs> A jeep. It's a felted Fremges Fibers needle case. I just can't. I love all things with sheeps on them. And then there's a little bag that says, in the rhythm of the needles, there is music for the soul. And isn't that the truth? And there's a beautiful Olan, Olan, single superwash merino. The color is, it doesn't say. <laughs> doesn't say what color it is 
but it is a, a super wash merino. It's so pretty. This sock set from Big Little Yarn Company. This is the colorway Matsumi and Strawberry Jam. This will be the next pair of socks that I cast on 100%. As soon as I'm done with the Fat Bunny yarn socks, I will be making these. And Amanda, this is the same person who sent me the Hue Logo sock set all those years, all those years? It probably was all those years ago, like three years ago maybe now. And this will 100% be the next socks in there. It's just so, so, so pretty. And then she sent me a Tan and Casey project bag. This was the part, this is what she sent me for my birthday. <laughs> this beautiful bag. I have one Tan and Casey project bag. It's a little red bag. And I love to put a hat project in there. That's probably what my, that cashmere skein will go into to make a socket hat. Um, they're just so well made. Like so well made. They're like sturdy and fabulous. It's gorgeous and floral and beautiful. So these two, this will be treasured forever. This will immediately become socks <laughs> for sure. Um, and then I will have to go through all of that amazing yarn and try to set some aside for giveaways and for sharing because I love to spread the warmth and um, I'm not gonna, definitely not gonna hoard anything. I want to share as much as possible with y'all but those first vk skeins that i pulled out at the beginning i think really will become the cozy classic raglan at some point by jesse may um i think those four will be perfect i need to go through my stash and see if i have another skein that could possibly go with those but i'm so um unpracticed <laughs> at knitting garments like i have made the gramps cardigan for my husband and i've made a tiny gramps cardigan for nova and then I have made my Skyrim cardigan and that's it. <laughs> so I don't really know like how much yarn does it take to make a sweater for my size with maybe three inches of positive ease. Is it four skeins? Is it five? Because I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to start it and get to the end and be like, oh no. <laughs> but I think that's probably enough. I feel like it's enough. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But it just... <sighs> Literally that box showed up, I want to say, when? Tuesday night, maybe? It, it was one night this week and Nova, it probably was Tuesday night because I didn't open it. I didn't open it until when, Wednesday, I think, in the middle of the day. And Nova had this stomach bug, so she's been so miserable. Like, <sighs> poor thing, she had a fever on Monday and Tuesday. Um, she finally broke the fever, but she's been, just been having diarrhea and her stomach has been so upset. And so she's been really, really cranky, of course, and not wanting to eat very much. And she's like crying when she poops. And like, it's, we're definitely on the back end of it now. Like nothing has happened today so far, thank goodness. But I didn't even look at the box <laughs> because she was so sad. Like on Monday, maybe it was Monday night or Tuesday night, one of those nights, she laid on top of me and watched. we watched Mickey Mouse Clubhouse for two straight hours she was on my body and she, if you <laughs> that is not her she does not sit still she does not snuggle like she is busy she is a lady about town she does all kinds of stuff all the time um you cannot pin her down and she, to know that she was just on top of me laying on top of me for that amount of time like i knew she felt awful um so she's not like that anymore we're we've turned a corner and we're getting better but i didn't even look at the box and so I put her down for a nap on Wednesday and then, then I opened it and I was just like sitting on the floor surrounded by all this yarn being like ah, smelling the yarn fumes and like I wasn't feeling very well and I lost my voice and Thursday I couldn't talk at all. So <coughs> it's been a mess of a week, but this was like an amazing surprise <laughs> to get in the mail. And I don't know, like <laughs> saying thank you just doesn't like, I know I say this, I've said this before, but it doesn't seem like the words fit the magnitude of the support that you all give to me. Like I, I feel so lucky and I feel so blessed and you truly bring an immense amount of joy to my life and I'm eternally grateful for all of you. And yeah, I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled to be part of this Yarmy community and I'm so thrilled you all are here. Thank you for 
listening to my scratchy, scratchy voice for, gosh, 54 minutes. I may not be able to talk for the rest of the day, but <laughs> at least we got the podcast recorded. So I think I will end it here and go have another cough drop and edit this podcast because it has to go live tomorrow morning and normally I'm way more ahead of things than right now. So we'll do that. Um, this is available if you would like it, the belong wrap on Ravelry and on Payhip and yeah leave me a comment let me know what you're working on let me know definitely about any crochet designers that you're excited about who make fingering weight garments and just tell me what you're thinking i love that you're here and until i see you again happy crafting and happy june bye friends